But how did sin enter into the world? We see an explanation of this over in Romans chapter 5 and verses 12 through 14, where it states, Because of this, just as through one man, the sin entered the world, and through the sin death. Also thus unto all men the death passed, on the basis that all sinned. For until law, sin was in the world, but sin is not imputed, being no law. But the death reigned from Adam until Moses, even over those not sinning upon the likeness of Adam's transgression, who is a type of the one about to come. See, when Adam actually chose to eat of the tree of the forbidden fruit, he actually did it knowingly. He didn't do it out of ignorance. We see over in 1 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 14, and Adam was not deceived but the woman being thoroughly deceived fell into a transgression. See, Adam's blatant act of lawlessness resulted in exactly what God said it would result in. He's now subject to physical death. In addition, Adam actually passed that on to all of his offspring. Now, Adam was created in the image and likeness of God. The image is that Adam was wrapped in light. And the likeness is that he is an intelligent being. Now, he lost that garment of light when he sinned. He still has a remnant of the image, but nothing like what he had before. And the same thing with the likeness. And we see over in Genesis chapter 5, verses 1 through 3, that he actually passed on his image and likeness after his fall to all of his offspring. Here it says, this is the book of the generation of Adam in the day that God created man. He made him in the likeness of God. He created them male and female and blessed them and called them mankind in the day they were created. And Adam lived 130 years and begot a son in his own likeness after his image and named him Seth. So all humans die as a result of one man's actions. However, we cannot blame Adam for staying in this condition because you see that through Christ, God actually deals with the sin and the death by reckoning Christ's death and resurrection to us. Now, this is done through faith. The end result, of course, will be that all who take God at his word will be raised from the dead and will never have to face death again. Now, we as Christians do not have to wait until we're fully resurrected to actually live out our resurrected life. We have access to it now. We have access to it now because God actually reckons it to us. So we can actually manifest who we are in Christ now. We can love other saints, be content with what we actually have, have an unruffled mind, hold our anger out against unreasonable people, make others feel at ease, do things that are beneficial. Be true to our word. Keep an objectivity of mind. That is, keep our focus on who we are in Christ. And really the truth. Seeing things as they really are and living them out. And of course, knowing how to properly possess the body that we have to the glory of God. Because when we do this, there is no law that is contrary to that. The only thing we do is manifest out who we are in Christ and glorify God through that.